Uh, my name is Tali Trigg, I work for the International Energy Agency. And my name is Philippe Christ, and I work for the International Transport Forum at the OECD. Uh, I'm at the Fostering Sustainable Urban Mobility Solutions Workshop here today. Uh, to, um, I was helping moderate the session and uh, give a bit of the IA perspective. Uh, I've been working on electromobility for four years, so uh, trying to help um, bring together a bit of the networks and the experience from the past four years on electromobility internationally, but also uh, city-based as well. And I came to this uh, uh, forum because we at the International Transport Forum have been working on urban mobility issues, urban transport issues for uh, quite a long time. We recognize that this is one of the key areas where mobility growth will be taking place in the world in the future. There will be some strong constraints that will come from population growth in urban areas. And those constraints will most probably be felt uh, most acutely in the transport sector. And so we're here to both listen to our colleagues from around the world talk about emerging solutions, including electromobility, and also to contribute the experience from our own countries in that respect. Um, and I think the, the most interesting thing I've learned uh, may not have been, let's say, a specific thing, but it's just really interesting to hear from, say, UN Habitat and uh, a lot of our colleagues from around the world uh, who are focused on, say, urban planning and very much, uh, say, BRT, uh, to have electromobility be part of it. Um, I think that's a sign of, let's say, shifting sands. Not so much that just people want to buy electric passenger cars, that's not the point. The point is just that electromobility now is really uh, truly part of urban mobility solutions or a value proposition or potential and uh, especially related to uh, local air pollution. So I think the last, let's say, five years you've seen a lot of local air pollution incidents in the news and so electromobility uh, has come along a little bit as one possible uh, solution as a puzzle piece to help with a you know the jigsaw puzzle that is urban mobility solutions. And I would I would say it's also not a monolithic solution. That's one of the things that was really re-emphasized today, and, and the, that was something also that I hadn't expected in, in this type of meeting. Um, we're moving from a fairly uh, unique uh, or rather monolithic way of organizing our energy use in transport. Um, for very good reasons, because uh, oil fossil energy has been inexpensive, very practical, and has uh, met all the requirements we've had for it. But of course, there are downsides to that. I think the future that we're moving towards is one that's going to be a lot more diverse, diverse in the types of vehicles, even electric vehicles. We have trams, trolley buses, cars, small vehicles, light vehicles, hybrid vehicles. And that type of complexity, both in the form of the vehicle and also in the production of electricity, is something that requires coordination and certainly the involvement of a number of stakeholders that haven't necessarily been involved in the urban mobility discussions that we had to date. And so I think that's a very, uh, very uh, helpful output from this meeting, is that we are recognizing this complexity has to be managed differently. Oh, and I learned that uh, the wind blows in your face both ways when you're traveling to Brighton. Yeah, that's right. That's a, that's a good one. <laughs>